This training actually is going to be on the Kyocera 308CI, but also will encompass the 306 and the 307, although those machines will have a smaller display. It'll also actually, as far as the operation is concerned, the 400 series and the actual 500 series, which would be the 508 series equally as well. We're gonna first talk about how to load paper. We'll get into talking about how to unjam it, how to put toner in, and eventually we'll get in just to the basic operation of the machine. So let's talk about paper tray. You could have two or three paper trays. On this machine we have one, but they will all load the same. It is a user adjustable tray by squeezing here. That gets us down to 8 by 14. And of course going in here is your smaller size. We have a bypass which is over here. That also will go up to legal size, or 8.5 by 5.5 or smaller. And you notice the paper travel goes like such. So, jam removal, you want to make sure that if you start to pull this out, if you've got a jam and you feel or hear the paper, the stop. And right here, open up this section because that paper is probably half in and half out, and you can remove it right there. Anywhere you see a blue, notice it's A3. That is an access point for you for this A1. You notice the red roller, very, very hot. Do not touch that. Be very careful to remove the jam and not touch the red roller. Once you do remove the jam, firmly close like such, and you remove the jam in the center of the machine. If the jam is located up here in the dock feeder, it comes open like this. Once again, there's a blue sticker that says F on this one. It opens up. And you can remove it and that basically is your unjamming area only difference if you have more trays below this there would be an additional door down here where the stand is that you would open up a maintenance tip on this model like most machines is this glass right here we call this the slick glass if you have a line on your copy first thing i would do if the line on the copy is only when you're using the dock feeder in other words, you put an original here and you do not get a line, that means you've got one or two dots located on this glass. The dock feeder only uses this glass, and if there is a dot, it's going to look like a line. Make sure you clean that very well, and then you might as well just go ahead and clean the glass as well. Do not spray anything on it. Spray your glass cleaner on a towel, and then carefully remove any type of debris that's here and clean it fir firmly, but do not actually spray anything on here. Spray it on your towel, once again, that's very important, and then clean this area and then your line will most likely go away and it will save you a service call. So we'll talk about toners next, which is in this door here. As you know, this machine is a color machine. There's your yellow, cyan, magenta, and your black. Notice you heard that little click. This comes up when it comes time to replace. You just replace your toner. And it snaps back in. So you just lift up and you notice it just kind of pops out and back in place. You also have a waste container here. Remember that blue? There's blue, blue, and blue. So here and here and here, and that'll pop out. And that's your waste toner. That'll last about 40,000 copies, so it'll take a long time for that to actually to fill up. So there's your yellow, your cyan, magenta, and your black. And remember, just pop up, slide out, and you just pop a new one in like such. If you do not, cannot close the door back up, you did something wrong. Open that door back up and reseat everything and go. So let's talk about general operation. Like all of the Kyocera models, they have a home screen which is right here. And we've, we've talked about in other videos how to scan, but today we're going to talk about just the copy screen, which is here. Here's your paper selection. And on this machine, we only have one tray, but right here is our bypass tray that we talked about that was located down here. Notice it says media type. This is where you would change the type of paper because it's very important if you're going to run something thicker, we're going to scroll down here and we see thick. You want to make sure that you change that media type to thick if you're going to run a thicker page like a cardstock or something like that so it doesn't rub off. The zoom, 
you got a couple options here. Most common, your standard zoom, which gives you all presets. You can see those, which I'm sure you're familiar with already. Or, go back to zoom. You got the zoom entry, which most people are used to, where you can adjust it either below 100% and reducing, and obviously above is enlarging. And of course, you have a 25% reduction now for, reduc for reducing, and all the way up to 400% for enlarging. Anytime you want to get back to the main screen, you can hit your reset key, and that gets you back to the main screen. Right here is your lightness and darkness, pretty self explanatory where you just choose it negative one. And again, if you hit reset, it gets us back to square one. Two sided copies, that's under your duplex. Right now it's set for one to one. You'll notice this is one to two. So basically your first thing that says one side is what you have in the doc feeder and your output will be a two sided document. So you'd have two sheets here and you're gonna get a two sided document. This one, is it's already a two-sided document and it's going to put it back to two sheets or here a two to two so it's a two-sided document it's going to give you a two-sided copy notice it automatically reset because i talked too long combine which is a neat feature you have two and one or four and one the two and one if you put two originals in the doc feeder it'll reduce it 50 percent and give you both originals on one page if you did the four and one which is kind of cool what it would do is it would take all four originals, reduce it 25%, and put them all on one page for you. Remember, reset gets that back to square one, so it's no longer going to be on combined or any duplex or any other special features. Color selection, it's defaulted right now. You'll see there for black and white. So if you want color, choose this key here and say full color or auto color. But you can also do single color, which is different than some machines. You can choose all print to be magenta, yellow, red, green, or blue, which is much different than some machines because you can tell it, I want everything just green on this. Or once again, you can just go to full color. Anytime you hit the reset key on our machines, we have them defaulted back to black and white. So if you want a color copy, you physically need to tell it, I want to go to color. Down here, under the function key is some other features. And I'm gonna kind of go through some of the ones that I think you'll use the most. One is the collate feature, which is on now. So anytime you put an original in, and it's such as this original here, which is page one through page four, and we make a copy, which they go in face up, and it's already on collate, and we want, say, five copies of this, it's automatically gonna collate that for you and put them in order in the exit tray. Some of the other options underneath here is mixed size originals. If you had 8.5 by 11 and 8.5 by 14 legal size, you could mix those in the doc feeder, turn mixed size originals on, and it would actually identify when it came to a 14 inch and it would pull and put 14 or, and copy on 14 inch. You have to have 14 inch obviously in either in the bypass or you had another second tray that's where that would come from. So you have to have 14 inch loaded in the machine. You have a contrast key and a sharpness key, which you notice it's set for zero. You can adjust those. I wouldn't recommend it. We normally have the machine set to where you don't have to do anything with it. Skip blank page is another feature I feel like people do use, and that's if you're copying something and it's got a blank page separating a chapter or something. If you turn that on, when it becomes a, sees that blank page, it will not copy it. So that will save you copy clicks, actually. So let's get out of here, and we're gonna go back into this screen right here, or I should say our hard keys. Your energy saver, eventually when that comes on, after about 120 minutes of no activity, just press that, and that will get the machine back up and running within around 20 seconds if it's sit for a long time. You have an interrupt key, which is right here. If you've got someone making a long run that's copying, you can press the interrupt key. It will lock that job into memory. You can make your one or two copies, hit the interrupt key again, and then start back where you left off. Of course, this is your clear key, and there's your number pad key. And of course, these are hard keys, just like the home key that gets you to your send 
and fax if you happen to have that option on here. Even though it says fax, you still have to have the option. And we'll go back now to your home key as you'll see the same thing. There's fax. If that's there, then your fax will actually start, will work. The USB is located right here. That little USB port right there will allow you to scan to it, print from it. You just place it in here, hit your USB button, and actually it'll find all the documents on there and you can print from that as well. Some of the other features on the machine is like your ID copy. The healthcare, the healthcare uh, facilities will use that a lot. You'll, put, you'll press your ID copy, put your ID here, press start, flip it over, and press start again, and it'll put that ID or healthcare insurance card all on one page for you. So let's go back to home once more. So the, generally what you're going to use the machine for is on the copy screen, and you actually do not have to do anything else. Let's hit reset again. I didn't tell you there's a stop key there as well. So if you've done something and you go, what have I done? You can hit the stop key. But if you just want one copy of this, you literally do not have to do anything else but hit the start key. Well, I said that. Let's hit reset. It automatically is going to go to that particular tray that the paper is and start printing. Obviously, your exit's down there. And your copy job's already done. Only other thing is your status. If you've got this set up to be printing to it, the status will tell you what's going on. If you want to look at your print jobs, that's going to show you what's going on as far as print jobs that are coming into it. So if you've got one that's stalled up, you can go in there and delete it. Uh, same thing with any scanning jobs and so forth. That's what that is for there. One other menu I'll show you is the system menu and counter. This also gives you the counter to where if you wanted to actually know how many pages on there or we're asking for a particular number. This machine obviously is brand new and it shows you how many copies are actually on the machine. So that's your basic operation of the machine. I've bypassed several features. So if you do think that there's something that you want to do special, make sure you contact our office and we'll do one-on-one -on -one training with those particular features and make sure you know how to use the machine to its fullest. Thank you.